Oh no, me twin not working. Oh, I, I changed cap. Oh, no. Then, then I, I changed tube. Still not working. I guess me need to talk to Spiri. Spiri, fix my tube amp. What do I do? What? I do not understand. Why don't you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Waiting? Spiri, what's the deal? Did you try D Lab Electronics? Be very impatient. Gonna call D Lab. Hey, everybody, what do you say that we work on a giant tube ham transmitter? No, 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 no. I know you guys have had enough of that. I listened to the comments. So now we are back on a guitar amp repair, this time a Fender Twin. Condition unknown. Let's take a look at it, and I'll bring her up on a Variac, see if we can breathe some life into this beast. Let's go. Guided tour time of the Fender Twin. She looks pretty much original. Front panel has some wear and tear, but that's okay. Let's take a look inside. There's the eyelet board. Everything looks 100% original. I don't see any signs of maintenance whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. And look there. There's the date. 1971. Alright, let's flip it over. Look at the tube sockets. And of course, inspect those filter caps. Alright, top side. All the tubes are removed. They're actually in that bag over there. Have not looked at those. But the sockets look good. They don't look corroded. Doesn't appear as though anybody's been in there mangling on the, the little contacts. Let's take a look at our filter caps. Oh yeah, the old originals. So we know those are bad. Let me see if I see anything popping out of the ends there. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, but we have to change them before I apply power. All right, so real quick, before I waste my time putting in filter caps and find out we have a bad power transformer, I'm going to bring this thing up slightly on a Variac just to make sure that I've got high voltage back here. Got to be really careful, guys, on these diodes, okay? So I'm just looking for the AC applied. There we go. So there's about 184 volts. I'm only applying about 25 volts to the input. I just wanted to make sure that the transformer is not open. All right, let's proceed with changing out the filter caps. Well, here's our F and T replacement filter caps. I use F and T's in all of these fenders. So we have a pair of 100 microfarad at 450 volt, and these are all 22 microfarad at 500. Those will go here, and these 70 microfarad ones will be replaced by the 100 microfarad F and T's, okay? So if you look at all these caps, you'll see the negatives are facing you, except for this one, the positive end is facing you. That's because these two caps are in series to double the voltage and half the capacitance, okay? So be very careful when you put those two new caps in there that you get this positive face this way where you're going to have an explosion. So I'd recommend that you start with these two caps. Take yourself a pencil, put a little plus and negative sign here to ensure that you get those in correctly. And these guys here, I think you can remember that the negatives are coming at you. So let's change them out. All right, just get in here, clippity doo da. Get them out of your way. Oops, that felt good. And then our new caps, we're going to put them in here. We're going to do J-hook connections on the leads. It's always very difficult to try to get these original leads out of these eyelets. You'll do more damage than good. Just J-hook them in. So in case you're wondering what I mean by J-hook, let's start with this cap. This one's going to have the negative facing you. Take an X-Acto, knock the corrosion off that lead. And you're going to take your pliers and make a hook. Then your new cap, you can lay him in there. Line him up. Get the excess lead out of your way. 
crimpity doo da to give yourself a mechanical connection. Okay. Get the old soldering iron in there. Voila. Got the other J hooks done. Solder them up. Remember, guys, it's not bigger the glob, the better the job. Once you see that solder flow in there, go around those leads, you're good. And yeah, I did poke myself on the cap, but it stopped bleeding. D Lab's not going to die. The last three are easy, they're all the same value. You don't have to worry about getting that polarity flipped. Pop them out of there. And we'll get the new ones in. Alright, we've got fresh meat in the cage. Let's get the cover on, go bottom side, change out the negative bias caps. So these are your negative bias caps. You have to change these, guys. Don't leave them in, because if you lose negative bias, your output tubes go warp drive. These are rated at 50 microfarad, 70 volts. I'm going to up that value to some 68 microfarad caps. There's a new negative bias caps installed. Remember guys, positives go to ground. So your negative lands here, and on this cap, your negative is going to the pot. Positive is going to ground. So before I install the tubes, I'm going to ensure that I have negative bias. So I've connected my DC meter to the grid of one of the output tubes. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Just pick one and I'm going to bring it up slow here on the variac and make sure we see negative voltage when we do. So that's a good sign. All right, let's get the tubes installed. All right, I got all the tubes installed and normally at this point I would go ahead and bring the amp up but I'm kind of concerned about the looks of these 6L6 tubes. This one especially, looks like there's been some serious arky sparkies going on inside. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these on the tube checker because I do not want a shorted tube to hurt the amp. Well, here's one of the 6L6's under test on the amp that tracks. About 87. The first one checked around 80. So the tubes are probably okay. All right, should have held that last comment. Look at the gain in this guy, 170% emissions. Let's check it one more time. I got a feeling. Yeah, look at all that plate current. 120 something milliamps. This tube's got a problem. It's a good thing to check them, huh? Yeah, it's not good at all. All right, so these two checked real high on plate current and these two checked okay but they were weak so I went ahead and installed a new set of 6L6's so now we can fire it up here we go I have the filament power on but the standby is off I'm going into the audio test set then over to the scope to monitor and I'm using my audio generator as an input so here goes the standby The audio test set showing output. Let's check the scope. Yep, and it looks clean. And there's no fire shooting out of this thing, so I think we have some good progress here. So, next, we need to move to the eyelet board, get rid of these old red uglies. There's some old dried up electrolytics. Go through here and make sure everything's cool on that board. And then we'll get somebody over here to play it. So it's looking good for this twin reverb. I did notice that somebody put on a grounded cord, but they took off the ground prong. Who knows why that is. We'll repair that, change out the caps, and give it a full checkout in part two. We'll see you then. Recalculating. Recalculating? I don't even drive.